U.S. President Donald Trump has returned to the White House after being hospitalized for COVID-19. His physician says he'll receive further care over the coming days, but a number of White House staff have been infected as well. We'll go live to our Washington correspondent after this report. It was a determined Donald Trump wearing a mask who emerged onto the steps of the hospital. Four days after he shocked the world by announcing he and First Lady Melania had tested positive for COVID-19, Trump was back. After the short helicopter flight to Washington, the president crossed the White House lawn and strode up the staircase. He made a point of removing his mask, offering a salute to the departing air crew. And there was encouragement for the other seven and a half million Americans who've been infected by the virus. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're gonna beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're gonna beat it. I went, I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. One more question. Today. Trump's Democratic challenger, Joe Biden, was asked on television whether he agreed the president had to bear some responsibility for contracting the virus. Anybody who contracts the virus by essentially saying masks don't matter, social distancing doesn't matter, I think is, is, is responsible. Those words will not be enough to deter the president. In one of his many tweets on a day of high drama, Trump pledged to be back on the campaign trail soon. Let's get the latest now with Stefan Simons joining us from Washington. Good day to you, Simon. Um, the president may be back at the White House sounding upbeat, but that does not end all the uncertainty about his health, does it, Stefan? No, it doesn't. And uh, let's uh, remind our viewers, this is a president on steroids, not figuratively, literally steroids. And maybe that explains why he feels so strong and so good after just two days or almost three days in care of a top team uh, of physicians and uh, doctors uh, who has given him any possible treatment, the best treatment possible. Uh, Medic, uh, medicines, etc., which are not at this point only early in the disease available to all the Americans who are infected by COVID-19, who were not available, which were not available to all the Americans who died, 210,000 plus. Um, so that's the difference here. And yes, it was a, um, a reminder uh, for everybody here in the U.S. watching this, this was a bizarre show. This was the showman's show um, with the president coming after a few days uh, in, in at Walter Reed's uh, medical center back to the White House, um, portraying himself as a strongman, basically as if he would have beaten COVID-19. Again, this is not a prick in the finger or the sniffles. This is COVID-19. This kills people, a lot of people, 210,000 plus. I said that before. The president on the Roosevelt balcony taking off his mask and showing to his uh, base and to all American people, you see, I beat it. Is that true? No, it's not. What uh, commentary did we get from this? Well, from, um, I'm just quoting here a little bit, clown, lunatic, adjectives, reckless, despicable, and even criminal. Now we will see how this will all develop in the next few days. Uh, Stefan, it's not just the president, a number of key aides have also been infected. What does this mean for everyday, everyday business at the center of power in the US at the White House? I wish I could tell you that, uh, but I don't know. Uh, the White House is literally a hotbed for coronavirus right now. Um, and um, we, the press, are not uh, made to know if there is actually really contact tracing going on, which should be going on, because just uh, today, in the local time here in America, uh, the press secretary, the White House press secretary, uh, was tested positive. Uh, uh, Ms. McKinnon, uh, McKinney, uh, two uh, other aides were tested positive. So this is not over for the White House. This is also not over for anybody who was in contact with the president 
in the last few days and before he was probably uh, uh, infected and then diagnosed as positive. So this goes into the Senate, to the Congress, House of Representatives. There is hundreds of people in the White House, outside the White House, part of government to be contact traced, to be maybe tested and then, of course, if ill, treated. Um, this is a hot mess, a real hot mess right now. Stefan, thanks so very much for that. From Washington. U.S. stocks rose to their highest level in a month on Monday, with investor confidence growing over the possibility of a new fiscal stimulus deal. Markets also appeared to be calmed by news that U.S. President Donald Trump was leaving hospital following treatment for COVID-19. Positive economic data from the services sector also helped. Asian trading on Tuesday also bounced back. Let's get more from our markets correspondent, Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt. Chelsea, markets across the globe very upbeat about Donald Trump leaving the hospital. But experts in the U.S. saying that the president isn't out of the woods yet. So all that optimism could be premature. It, it certainly could. Uh, there's still clearly a lot of uncertainty around uh, Donald Trump's uh, health and, and how long it will take for him to, to fully recover, whether there will be long term impacts um, from uh, the, the virus. But it does, of course, remove some of this, um, the, some of these worst case scenarios that traders and investors had really been fearing. It does remove uh, the prospect of, of a lot of chaos uh, in the White House. Um, so that has helped people uh, feel a little bit more comfortable. But I think also the, the, the progress that's being made on stimulus talks in the U.S. Is, is definitely helping to boost markets as well. Republicans and Democrats have been negotiating for stimulus for, for several weeks now. Um, but they, we've heard from really both sides of the aisle. Democrats like uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, but also Trump and, and some of his White House officials have, as well are really pushing forward and hoping to get more than a trillion dollars in stimulus to help offset some of these continued effects of the virus on the economy. Chelsea, on uh, currency markets, we see a weaker U.S. dollar. How does that fit into the picture? It might sound a little counterintuitive, uh, all of this potentially good news for the U.S. economy, somehow weakening the, the currency. But uh, the U.S. dollar, uh, in addition to being the, the U.S. currency, it's also one of the uh, preeminent safe havens in, in markets. So it does tend to rise whenever there's a lot of uncertainty in the, um, the, the, the markets. And now that we are seeing some of that taken off with Trump uh, recovering, with the prospects for stimulus looking better, with the outcome of the U.S. election looking a little more clear, that has helped people feel um, more more safe. And, and we, so that's why we're seeing people um, sort of go away from safe havens like the dollar. Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt, thank you.